Hi there. So let's get back to this curb. As you can see from, from its shape, there are two more important points than, than other along the, the, the journey. It's a starting point and there's the end point where growth start and where growth ends. These two points are extremely important to understand why they occur. The first point we will leave for a little bit later. But the, the, the second point, the one where uh, growth stops, let's dig into that right now. So think about it like this. There are two things that can help you grow online. The first one is people and naturally because they are the ones posting stuff in these uh, channels. The second one uh, is algorithms. And what they do is they, that they try to figure out who likes what content. And then they bring that type of content in front of the face of that person uh, who, who, who likes it. The reason as to why this has occurred is essentially because there's simply too much information out there for you to see it all at once. So when you go to Google and you search for something, they've created an algorithm that goes through all the information online and then try to deliver to you the stuff that you like the most or the stuff that you would like to see. So they've created algorithms, actually a couple of them, that try to get to know you, try to understand you, to sort of figure out what it is that you like. Same thing goes for Facebook. Uh, on the Facebook platform, you've got, you know, between 150 and 1500 posts that you could see at any time that you log in. And there is simply not space enough for that. And so they've also created an algorithm that selects the information that they think that you like to see when you log in. And the reason naturally why these services do this thing is because you should like them more. So it's this, you know, kissing match between you, you know, going to their search engine, they like you, or you're going to their, their, their social network and they like you for that. And then they try to return the favor by delivering stuff that you like. Now, the way this works uh, for Google, for example, is co let's consider person A and person B. Both of them search for the word happiness. Google has figured out that person A is like a soulful dude and this is a Friday afternoon at three o'clock, they've stopped working. And so Google realized that when that person searches for happiness, they're out to have fun. They want one of those monkey videos shooting an AK-47 into a group of people and uh, you know, it's all play and fun and you can laugh about it. That's the person A type. So in the search result, what they deliver is essentially a rad dude or a monkey video, or something that is associated with entertainment, because that's what this user is looking for. However, person B, who Google also knows, is one of those people who visits those suicidal forums who search for, you know, kill me cocktails, and, you know, doesn't really mm, seem to be such a happy person. When that person searches for happiness, they mean something completely different. They're out to get happy to go away from sad into happiness. So instead, Google will probably toss up a Soloft ad and Soloft being antidepressant, that's a pretty suitable piece of content for that person. So you can get this now. These filters try to figure out, or these algorithms try to figure out who we are, and then they deliver the content that they think that we're looking for. And this becomes ever so strong, uh, or more and more strong, um, as we post more content and as these algorithms get to know us because then they think that okay the, this person likes this thing and so I should deliver uh, that or more of that to this person. The first time I saw this was at a TED talk. There was this guy uh, talking about something called filter bubbles. I hadn't really thought about it before that but what filter bubbles explain is this end point of the viral curve. Imagine it being like this. Imagine these algorithms trying to show you only stuff that you like. The good thing with that is that you like those engines more or those uh, social networking platforms more. The opposite side of that thing being you will see something completely different than anyone else in the world. Meaning that you know, it's all nice and dandy if we're all like peace-loving, uh, open-minded people, then we will see stuff that confirms that position because they will give us that stuff. However, if we like war, killing people and, and guns, 
they will instead bring that stuff that reconfirms that position to us. And so in terms of being a marketer in this world, when you have only one thing to bring to the market, one opinion, one sentiment, one type of content, you will have to change that in ways in which it moves between different of these bubbles because otherwise your growth will be very, 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 very small because you will only reach those who exactly match what you're trying to say in the first place. You need to find ways in which you reach out of your filter bubble. So that is the, that, that, that is the whole idea with this. And those filter bubbles, as they remove content from people, uh, people become more centered to what it is that they already like. We will go through how to actually break through these filter bubbles and get into more of them in order to get your Superman curve to, to um, um, grow in, in several of these S-shapes.